So what's the hip? Similar to the shoulder, the hip is a ball socket joint. Its main function is to provide stability and motion to the body. And it's the largest ball and socket joint in the body. You want to use it to accomplish physical activities, such as walking, running, squatting. And the structures that are involved in making this possible include the pelvis, the femur, the acetabulum, which is a which is a fancy word for basically the socket, part of this ball socket joint, the labrum, which is the, cartilag the cartilaginous and fibrous region that provides a cushion. And you also have other supporting structures like muscles, tendons, cartilage, and fibrous tissue found both in the pelvic and the femur region. So things that can go wrong, it's actually pretty complex, but just to simplify, we're gonna be talking about fractures in this instance. Other cases where things can go wrong can involve either the muscle, can involve either the bursae. So the bursae are the liquid filled sacs that provide a stability and cushion, as well as lubrication with this ball socket joint. You can also have issues with the tendons and other connective tissue in that region. But most of the time, whenever surgery is required, it's because of a fraction, either in the bone of the, of the femur or in the pelvic region. The current modalities and treatment modalities that depend on the extent of damage would include a partial or total hip replacement. And so for this instance, we'll be talking about a total hip replacement. And this is a femoral hip stem replacement. So there are six types of major stems and other categories would include whether it's a press fit, a cementless application or a cemented application. And usually you would want to use cemented applications um, to put, apply to industrial or medical cement in the case of uh, osteoarthritis. But otherwise you would want the bone to ingrow into, into the coatings of the stem. So here to the right, you have a stem. And so it has hydroxyapatite and usually it's made of metal, either titanium, uh, alloys with cobalt chromium and on some instances stainless steel. For this case, we'll be talking about the striker secure fit advanced femoral hip stem. And some characteristics of it is that it's a double wedge type of mount of stem. So based on the mount group, it's a double wedge category. It's also cementless. So when the surgeon installs this or implants this, it's installed with press fits or cementless. Femoral dallies are available at 127 and 132 degrees. And it's some other features include the titanium plasma spring on the surface, as well as an hydroxyapatite coated layer you can see in this section. So this will be for the stem section. There's also the, the part that interacts with the socket of the acetabulum, which is comprised of metal, as well as polyethylene linings and some ceramics, depending on the ingrowth you would want at that region. And you can see here some holes from where the, this piece will be screwed into the, the pelvis. Here's a brief intro video you can watch on your own time that explains these different features and functions that surgeons consider when giving someone a little hip replacement. So here's a caveat. Um, it might seem good that you're getting, that there are medical devices available uh, to solve these issues, but there's a false law that explains the remodeling of bone tissue. So it's not static. Bone is actually like tissue and it remodels through the osteoblast, osteoclast, and osteocytes. And Wolf's law explains how through the mechanical application of stress through walking or physical activity, bone actually models by, by making a by making an electric gradient caused by mechanical stresses and that leads to bone deposition. So when you add a femoral stem, you would have something called stress shielding. Because a femoral stem is made of titanium alloys and is very strong, over long term periods of time it actually lowers uh, femoral strength because it handles more of the load that it would be that would have been handled before by native tissue. And so since you're not using the bone it loses strength. So well, there are ways to mitigate this, which is why there are modalities that use ceramic materials or porous materials to induce ingrowth into the stem, as well as therapy and exercise post-surgery. So let's get started. So this here is a stem. It's a double wedge feature of a stem, and there's other types. This is a family tree to the left. So when you start any SolidWorks parts, this is the part, and we want to start uh, with the most basic feature or planes. And then, as you add on these features, they're, they get they listed here on this family tree. Go ahead and click new part.
also edit the material properties. So we edit material and check if we can add titanium. So now we edit the material. Let's go ahead and edit our appearance. And to render, you just go to our photo view and click preview window. So we're done rendering. And what you want to do there is you want to save the image. So that's pretty much it. Just to give you some takeaways of what we learned today, we learned some orthopedic properties or orthopedic elements to consider when designing stems, why it's useful, as well as how to loft these parts with different profiles when you're modeling medical devices and how to make it look pretty.